So I'm uh, Shane Williams. I'm the executive director of Lookout Emergency Aid Society, and we're here on 135A Street, uh, in between uh, our homeless uh, uh, building, our homeless services building, which has the front room drop-in and gateway shelter, and our health ser services building, which has uh, uh, the uh, Surrey North uh, Health Clinic and uh, Positive Point and some HIV services that we offer here. Lookout's been part of this community since 1992, and it's the former Keys Housing and Health Solutions. And we're at the opening today. Uh, uh, or at least the launch event uh, for our new uh, Safe Point um, um, Safe Consumption Services uh, in partnership with Fraser Health. And uh, uh, the actual service itself will start um, on Thursday and will be open from 7 a.m. till 1 a.m. every day. So um, we'll be providing uh, oversight for folks uh, consuming drugs here on, one, on 135A Street. And uh, it's uh, affectionately known as the Strip here in Surrey, British Columbia. Um, and uh, it's interesting to note that we're on city property and uh, you know our partners at the municipality have provided this, this space for Fraser Health and, uh, and Lookout to provide this service. Um, and it's been an awful long time that we've been advocating for help uh, for folks that, uh, you know, um, um, are, aren't really connected to services and the intravenous drug users in the community that uh, need a leg up. And this is one more opportunity for folks to uh, gain rapport, usefully, safely, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, get, get networked and, and uh, into other services. And uh, so our, our real goal here is to create that rapport and trust and for those that want to make a change in their life that we're going to be a conduit to making that change happen so the proximity to the other services I mentioned earlier is really important um, and it's also uh, important to add that we've got a community policing station just in front of the facility um, and in terms of our partners that are going to uh, keep the area safe uh, and stop the predators from you know uh, um, uh, preying upon a really vulnerable population yeah so right over here we have the shelter Right, and that's, uh, that's right. Yeah, so we've got the yeah. great gateway so right shelter in the dropway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, drop in, and we've got another shelter in the back um, called the uh, the Parkway Shelter. And uh, so we've got the 80 beds of shelter here uh, within 10 feet. So if people want to get off the street, they want to get out of the parks, they want to get well uh, and get some good sleep, that they can do that. At the Front Room Resource Center, we serve about uh, 400,000 meals a year uh, out of that space. And so folks can get some food. Um, and uh, we do a ton of referrals, and we housed uh, about 700 people out of the, out of the site, out of, well, out of the, in the Fraser region last year. So um, that's, a, that's an awful lot of folks, and uh, you know, there's still plenty of work to do uh, and we see this as one more opportunity to help folks um, while they're um, you know pre-contemplative and not ready for change but when they want to make change we're going to be there uh, with, uh, with you know hopefully a trust a trustful relationship and we're going to be able to help them do that and make that change and just before we go inside to have a look yeah. you mentioned the Surrey Outreach Team uh, Community Policing Station so That's just right. going to give everybody a view of that and just yeah. how close it is and then the far building just and you can't really see it here but uh, this is our health building that has uh, the Positive Point uh, Needle Distribution uh, and, and Harm Reduction Center as well as uh, uh, Positive Haven which is for folks that are HIV or Hep C positive. The Jeff Mahler Gro Grocery uh, which uh, provides a hundred uh, fo uh, food packages to people that are HIV positive and uh, the, the Julian House which is uh, a small uh, uh, six bed resource for folks that are HIV positive and uh, a place for them to, to call home. So uh, you know having these support services in such close proximity is a real advantage to uh, disenfranchise people here locally mm -hmm. um, now we just need to work on minimal barrier housing uh, here as a community and I, and I think we've got a, you know really the four pillars uh, uh, approach that's necessary to help people take that next step mm -hmm. okay. uh, so why don't we go okay. in and take a look yeah let's have a look we'll right. follow you <laughs> So entrance, it's uh, handicap accessible, so there's a wheelchair ramp uh, here for folks if they, and we do see an awful lot of people that are um, physically impaired. I'll let you um, go in first, we'll follow. So do we want to wait until Sure, later? why don't we wait, so why don't we just, so one thing we haven't talked about yet, uh -huh. is why don't we talk about what exactly is inside of this building here, how sure. many people can be inside at a time, Great. why don't we talk about some of the details. Great, so we've got seven booths inside, and it's very much like Insight, if you've seen Insight, in terms of the in, in, inside of the uh, of the facility, so Insight's the, the first safe uh, safe consumption site in, the, in, in, in Canada, um, and so we've got seven booths here to offer to folks. Uh, coming in uh, basically what they can do is they'll check in at the front and when there's an open booth uh, they'll be able to walk through the door uh, and grab harm reduction supplies anything that they may need to facilitate the drug use um, and uh, to keep themselves safe 
uh, and uh, we'll be uh, having nursing. Uh, Fraser Health uh, provides nursing on site and the lookout staff will be there as well. Uh, so it's really great to have that community relationship um, that lookout has with folks already and that relationship's transferable in a, into, a, into the clinical folk um, that maybe don't know the population so well. And um, so it's going to translate into safer use. Uh, it's going to create uh, um, um, uh, you know, understanding uh, a, a situation that's not non-judgmental and safe for people so that when they want to make other changes they can access that very very quickly and so they'll go through they'll, they'll, they'll do their business essentially uh, and then they'll uh, you know be monitored uh, for any overdose signs um, they'll take their time uh, and then they'll walk through and uh, be open to access other resources um, or take other steps as it as they as they uh, you know uh, want to in the future. Sorry. And is there a needle exchange out of this building uh, or is that done separately? Uh, uh, harm reduction materials are available on the site um, but uh, we're going to redirect people that just are, are grabbing uh, uh, harm reduction materials and, and leaving with them. Mm -hmm. uh, these, these harm reduction materials are actually meant to be used on the site. So um, folks that are coming in uh, would, uh, like I said, check in with the desk uh, and then uh, walk through and get their harm reduction supplies. And so by the time they walk into that door, they're already into the area where there's some use, right? So they'll grab their harm reduction supplies and they'll sit at a booth. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, but the positive points open. Uh, uh, Eight, nine hours a day? Jeez, I don't, I'm not even sure. You might want to edit that out. Um, um, and then this is just one of two sites. Are you guys operating the second site, or is Lookout just in charge of this 135A site here? We're 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 doing the the, the site here on 135A Street, as well as the one on Powell at the Powell Street Getaway. Um, so it's the former living room, uh, and we operate that one as well. So the Health Canada exemption uh, actually approved both of the Lookout partnered sites. The one downtown is obviously partnered with Vancouver Coastal Health, mm -hmm. and this one here with Fraser. Uh, and um, you know, we're really happy to be able to bring a regional approach to keeping uh, um, drug users safe and uh, you know so if somebody is uh, planning to go into the Fraser region we can uh, refer the the new site uh, here in Fraser to them and they can continue to use safely in their transition and uh, we know that uh, you know folks that are living um, uh, marginally uh, or, or homeless are, are very transient and recognizing that and, and having a, a services in both areas is going to be a real advantage to people uh, living on the street Mm -hmm. okay. And now one thing that's um, still, you know, Fraser Health is still waiting on is the application um, to uh, take drugs orally um, and intranasally. Uh, so do you want to tell me a little bit about that and, uh, you know, why that could help? So in addition to uh, injecting drugs, people could, I, I suppose, snort or is it smoke? Yeah, uh, that's right. Here? That's right. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, this is really important because if you look at the actual overdose deaths in the, in the, in the province and the, the thousand last year and the 500 this year already, um, there's a large percentage of people that are snorting and are, are smoking. And uh, so it's important that we um, have an ability to offer just a few more, uh, um, um, a few more op options again to folks uh, so that, uh, you know, it doesn't, it's not a bar to service, it's not something that is a barrier that, uh, you know, they have to go somewhere else to, to, to use the drugs in the way that they want to use them. Great. So when we first walk in here, we've got sort of a, an entrance an entrance desk here so that people check in. Yeah, in so there'll sense. be a little check-in spot where folks can, uh, you know, uh, uh, come in and, and, and talk to individuals, get a sense of where they're at that day, um, um, you know, ask for, you know, the, the, the use of the room, uh, register basically, um, and then uh, there may be, uh, um, you know, the booths might be busy at this time, so, you know, folks would sit down and uh, they'd wait their turn. Mm -hmm. And right next door, there is a police station, um, so we just spoke a bit about this already, but speak to me again about how uh, you guys are optimistic that police won't act as a barrier to people uh, coming to this site. Yeah, so we've had a lot of conversations about this with um, with our guests as well as uh, with the local RCMP and, uh, you know, community partners. Um, and, uh, you know, it's really important for the for the success of SafePoint uh, that uh, folks are, are given the opportunity to access the service. And so we've had a, a, a guarantee from our, 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 our policing partners that uh, they're not going to be interfering with people coming to use at SafePoint. Um, their, their goal and their um, 
primary goal here on 135A Street will be to, um, uh, you know, focus in on the organized crime or the, you know, the folks that are, are dealing uh, in, in, in the neighborhood with large quantities and not so much uh, the people that are, um, you know, disenfranchised, poverty-stricken and uh, suffering from addiction concerns. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's going to be a really organic relationship. It's one that uh, every day the Lookout staff are meeting with uh, the police in the morning to talk about the, you know, what's happened on the strip in the last 24 hours and, uh, you know, review successes and review uh, some challenges and uh, continue to work uh, to, to make the lives of, of folks better down here rather than uh, stop them from accessing service. So. Mm -hmm. And how many people will actually be working in here at a given time? That is a great question mm -hmm. um, and something that maybe you can help me out with. Yeah, there will Thank be a, a minimum of four. Four. Yeah. yeah. Four at a time. time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So it could be more than four, but minimum of four. <laughs> minimum of four, yes. Gotcha. Yeah. So when gotcha. it comes right down to the actual operations of the, of the facility and uh, mm -hmm. staffing and, and, and the way that the, f the folks flow through, um, you know, Chris Buckner, who's actually doing the tour right now, might be a good person to hand you off to. Okay. Great. Great. All right, then. Well, let's see if they're ready for us. <laughs> I think we might have to wait our turn. <laughs> yeah, I think he's with somebody. He's on yeah, camera. Yeah, looking through he's here, so we right kind now. of have a look here at just sort of some of the supplies. So um, is anybody available to tell us what supplies we have available at, you know, every given time here? Staff and monitor for any signs of overdose. Also engage in conversations, health teaching, um, and uh, just assess uh, if the person is looking for any referrals of any sort. Um, just try to build relationships to try to engage people in, into the system of care. Um, but if an overdose does occur, um, uh, staff will be able to intervene quickly. Uh, we've got uh, obviously Narcan on site. We've got pulse oximeter, which is a key piece of equipment just to monitor oxygen saturation levels. Um, and, uh, and we've got uh, oxygen that can be administered. Um, the staff uh, in this room will be made up of uh, nursing staff as well as uh, as harm reduction workers who all have been trained in overdose response and, uh, and, and CPR and will be able to, to intervene as a, as a team. We'll call BC Ambulance for backup in case somebody's, uh, 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 if their overdose is severe enough that they need to be hospitalized. Uh, uh, but we anticipate that, uh, that uh, only a minority of people will actually require or want to be trans transported to hospital. A key feature of this site, which is um, uh, very important for people to understand in terms of how we've built it, is that uh, we've implemented uh, access to low barrier opioid agonist treatment immediately next door. So there's a clinic next door called the Shop Clinic. And, uh, and beginning in January, we, we implemented OAT uh, at that site in order to facilitate referral uh, from this from the supervised consumption site in, into uh, treatment there. We know from the evaluation, the scientific evaluation of Insight, that, uh, that people who use supervised injection services are 30% more likely than, than, than drug users who don't uh, to, uh, to engage in first-line addiction treatment. And so uh, we intentionally implemented the, the treatment immediately next door so that staff will be able to uh, assess for readiness and accompany people who are ready next door to be able to engage in that uh, addiction treatment if, if need be. So that's part of the, 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 the broader suite of services. We also have uh, a 24-hour drop-in uh, center and uh, two shelters, uh, all, of, all of which are, are run by Lookout Emergency Aid Society, and, uh, and so people are able to uh, engage in those services as well. And uh, so we really see this as a uh, a kind of continuum or campus of, of services on 135A really to try to engage this population into the treatment of the system of uh, care, uh, maximize opportunities for treatment, and most importantly, keep them alive and, and try to have uh, uh, some impact on the, on, on the public health emergency and uh, the opioid deaths that we're, that we're all experiencing currently. And I guess this is part of a, a, the media shows up because it's where people are going to be shooting up drugs. Yeah, it's a bigger picture than that. It's much bigger. This is um, we're we're hoping to have a population level impact with this sort of intervention. We know that this site and these seven booths alone aren't enough to do that. But this, in combination with uh, expanded access to first line uh, opioid uh, dependency treatment that I described, along with the interventions that uh, we have our public health nurses going out and doing, 
uh, along with uh, the interventions that uh, that even the RCMP who 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 are who are working up and down this strip they're they're carrying Narcan and naloxone and they're able to, to intervene it's a uh, it's a whole range of pieces um, including some of the prescribing policies and uh, and and all those pieces coming together to try to really make a, a, an impact on the emergency that we're that we're all experiencing currently more shots here. Yeah, and could perfect. you give us, uh, we're live on Facebook right now, <laughs> could oh, you give us uh, just a quick tour um, on, and sort of an explanation of, of what exactly we see uh, here at the site? Yeah, sure. Um, when people come in, they'll, uh, uh, they'll be greeted at reception by uh, staff who will treat them with respect and dignity. Uh, this is a safe place for them and a place where they'll be treated as uh, humans who, human beings who need uh, access to healthcare services. Um, and, uh, and they'll be welcomed uh, and, and treated uh, with, with, uh, with that respect. They'll uh, sign a waiver and be, uh, be uh, read the code of conduct and um, they'll choose a unique identifier that they'll use every time that they attend the site. And uh, when there's space, they'll be buzzed in from the waiting room into this area where they'll pick up the sterile supplies that they'll be requiring. The purpose of these supplies are to ensure that, uh, that there are no um, bacterial infections uh, that uh, occurred, uh, that will occur, but also uh, reduce transmission of uh, HIV, hepatitis C, so viral infections as well. Um, and uh, they'll be assigned at one of these seven booths and, uh, and they'll sit down, they'll use their drugs. The mirrors are to ensure good lines of sight for staff, to ensure that, um, that the, 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 per, the client using the site knows what's going on behind them and doesn't always have to turn around to see what's going on, but also uh, to uh, enable the, the staff to be able to have good lines of sight for, for, for all the people, especially if all booths are full. And they'll be looking um, to just make sure people are doing well, that there's no signs of distress, that there's no signs of uh, opioid overdose. If they do see signs of opioid overdose, um, the staff, which will consist of, which do consist of nurses and harm reduction workers, will be able to um, apply a pulse oximeter, which uh, identifies oxygen saturation levels. Um, and, uh, and if somebody's oxygen saturation levels are low and they're going into respiratory arrest, um, they'll be able to uh, give a intramuscular injection of naloxone and be able to apply oxygen in order to ensure that the person uh, doesn't suffer any damage due to the, the, their low oxygen levels, but also are able to, um, uh, to come back and uh, and live and not die, so and that uh, that that in preventing death is the key uh, purpose of this site. But there are so many more uh, pieces that we know that this site will benefit people. Uh, we know that from the scientific evaluation of Insight, that uh, people who use supervised consumption services are 30% more likely to engage in first line of opioid treatment, uh, and uh, and um, than than those who do not use. Uh, a supervised consumption site and so because knowing that we've intentionally wanted to take maximum opportunity of, of, of that and uh, and we've implemented uh, opioid agonist treatment uh, immediately next door at the shop clinic which is also run uh, by by lookout emergency aid society uh, in partnership with Fraser health and uh, and people who are eligible and interested will be able to be accompanied there and uh, be able to be uh, begin the steps of uh, being inducted in, into OAT and hopefully be, begin their journey of uh, uh, reducing their use of illicit substances and replacing it with medication. Um, there are other assessments and, and referrals that staff will be able to make here. Their uh, lookout runs uh, two uh, low barrier shelters in the area as well as a 24-hour drop-in service and uh, the real key here is to keep people alive and engage them in that system of care. Mm -hmm. Great. So again, seven. We have seven booths here, and each is equipped. Do people dispose of their own needles here when yeah, they're finished? Then that's what these are. When they're are done, for? they'll put the used needle in the in that box. Mm -hmm. The remainder of the of the contaminated materials will go over here. We'll drop them in here uh, to ensure safety, and um, and everything's processed as per biohazard. Uh, waste in mm -hmm. hospitals and other areas and then people will if they want to spend some time here engage with staff mm -hmm. they'll be able to do so here or at their booths um, 
when they're ready to go, they'll exit via this door. Or if they do require some additional monitoring and engagement, as I mentioned, uh, there's the 24-hour drop-in that's uh, adjacent and uh, the staff will be able to um, accompany them over there if need be and uh, follow up on those engagements and referrals as appropriate.